Hi, this is Jay Collier from the Photography Workshop Co. in Melbourne, Australia. Thanks so much for joining me today as I talk to you about the major differences between these two phenomenal carbon fiber tripods by Benro and how I utilize different features and functions in both of these tripods in different scenarios in the field. So stay tuned for more details on how one of these tripods could be the next decision you make in investing in some insanely good gear to get you out there and shooting with confidence. Today I'm going to have a chat to you about my choice in tripods, being that it's a, quite a common question I get asked as to which tripods I personally use, but what I would also recommend. Today I've got two different choices here of two tripods that I physically use in the field quite regularly, and it comes down to the choice of the two Benro tripods, both carbon fiber, that I have here right now, which is the Benro Tortoise here on my right, versus the Benro Rhino here on my left. Now I'm going to talk a little bit more about these, but also the most critical piece of gear that I have in my kit for travel, and that is the LBA2 Benro Leveling Base. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about what this does in a moment. But between these two tripods, there's a choice to be made dependent on where it is that I'm traveling and what it is that I'm taking pictures of. So what you'll see, the difference here between the Benro Tortoise versus the Rhino is the fact that the Benro Tortoise tripod has no center column, whereas the Rhino does have a center column. And I will reach for these two tripods in different situations based on what it is that I'm taking pictures of. If I'm out traveling and it's landscape specific, I'm hiking on foot and I'm just saving as much weight and size as possible, then generally I will reach for the tortoise with no center column, being that I can get down to the ground very quickly by simply pressing in the little silver buttons on the side here, you can lock the legs down to be completely flat on all three legs. There is a small button where you can adjust this by small incremental changes, which will lock the tripod away at small angles. Or if you're standing between boulders on uneven heights, you can have the legs at completely different heights. And again, just lock this one up to rest flat against a taller boulder that might be sitting directly next to you to give you the confidence that this thing is dead stable and 100% solid and it's not going to fail on you and your camera's not going to topple and hit the ground. Now in those situations that is mainly around landscape, having that no center column just enables you to work quickly. Now where I do reach for a center column is mainly when I'm shooting wildlife with longer lenses because quite often I will be in scenarios where I need to make a very quick height adjustment and that might be to clear some distracting foreground or foliage or grass or something that's interfering between me and the subject that I'm photographing. So having the tripod 
with the ability with that center column, rather than having to mess around with three legs to quickly get yourself a height advantage or lower your tripod quickly, it's just a case of using the center column and making that very quick adjustment. Now, unlike a lot of other tripods or lightweight tripods on the market, the center column on this one also being carbon fiber, but it's quite thick, which is extremely important for the fact that once you've got weight on this, the last thing you want is this wobbling around. And that might be in wind, particularly with very long super tele lenses. You'll find that the lens hoods on those, like I do personally use in my 600 f4, if it's a windy day, it can buff it around and almost act as a big sail. It will actually catch wind and transfer into a lot of camera motion and wobble. Now, if you are on a trip that is taking in landscape and wildlife, then in general, I will normally reach for the Rhino. For the reason that when you're shooting landscape, you've generally got more time on your hands to make those critical low ground adjustments when not having to move quickly in the case of missing a wildlife image. Where the Rhino does come into play, that you obviously don't have the advantage in the tortoise being that it is columnless, is the fact that the column on the Rhino can also flip in upside down to get you a very low angle shot if you wanted to. So it's a simple case of unlocking the center column, removing the center column, and placing it back in upside down. And once that's locked away, as you'll see, you'll get that very, very close to ground. The only time that this is a concern is if you're shooting with extremely wide angled lenses. Say you're shooting at 11 mil, 12 mil, or down to 14 mil. Depending on the angle of your tripod, it may pick up the two legs in your foreground. Plus working upside down, yes, you do have very angle flip out screens that will flip the image up the right way for you. But without that, you'll generally find everything upside down can be a little distracting and a little harder to work with. But I do find my main go-to for those trips taking in landscape and wildlife is the Benro Rhino that you see here. Now another reason why if I'm on a trip shooting landscape and wildlife or more specifically a wildlife specific trip the Rhino also has another really cool feature is that once you remove that center column it gives you the ability to remove one of the tripod legs. So of the three tripod legs, you'll see one that has a rubberized grip around it. This one will actually unscrew and then join together with the center column to create a monopod. Now a monopod can be extremely handy thing for wildlife photography. If you didn't want the extra bulk of using a full tripod, if you are moving around on foot, uh, also works really well as, as a hiking pole to get yourself up and down boulders or slippery surfaces, things where you might trip and fall versus using the whole tripod. Now where I personally like to use monopods is when I'm shooting out of a vehicle in Africa. So there are so many times that you've got wildlife coming close to the vehicle where you don't want to be shooting down on them from a higher vantage point. You want to try and get down to as close to ground level or eye level as possible. So I'll actually attach my camera to this, flip it upside down and pop it down to the ground and using the Canon Connect app as a Canon user, I can see and control my camera and fire my camera remotely while I can move this around to change the composition over the side of the car. So it is something that is quite handy, but again, it really depends on the wildlife and subject that you're shooting and where you are. So you will find a lot of guides won't allow that. Um, it's always best to check with your guide first if that's something you want to do because at the end of the day, you really don't want to disturb or annoy an animal for the sake of an image that might place you and other guests in the vehicle in danger. So just keep that one in mind. Now, once this is put back in and reattached to be a standard tripod again, the next thing I'm going to show you is the LBA2 leveling base and where this is really, really critical, particularly if you're a videographer where everything needs to be absolutely level. So as you would know, as a videographer, the worst thing is that if your horizons aren't straight. So fixing that in post is not as easy as it instills because you're having to adjust every single piece of footage back to level again. Where the leveling base comes into play also is for landscape photography. So what this will actually do is just basically a half ball that slides inside a small base which enables you to quickly level the tripod without having to mess around with three legs. Particularly I found if you're working in unstable ground, so that could be at the beach, in sand or in sand dunes or pebbles, things that 
the slightest movement is going to throw your tripod off. And in particular, if you're picking your tripod up, moving a couple of meters to find a new composition, you have to start all over again, messing with three legs and looking at one spirit level. Now what this leveling base will actually do is if you remove the tripod head, you can attach that to the leveling base and then the leveling base to your tripod legs. So it's designed to sit between your tripod head and your tripod legs. And what happens then is once that's attached, you'll see that the half ball that moves, this is a quite common thing to be built into video specific tripod legs. Because again, trying to re-level video footage is a pain and it's really something you don't want to do. But as a stills photographer, what turned me on to using leveling bases for the first time is after a trip I did to Namibia in 2013. So that was the first of many other trips that I've returned to Namibia. I only made the mistake once of not having a leveling base. Now I found myself working in sand in the dunes, particularly in Sossusvlei, where the slightest movement you're having to re-level your tripod again. Now I personally use L brackets for the reason that once you have the tripod level, rather than tilting the tripod head over for a vertical or portrait orientation shot, you're having to re-level each time. So what I'll personally do is just throw the tripod down, wriggle it hard into any sand to ensure that the tripod's as stable as possible, being that if I touch the camera and make any movements that it's not going to move. Then all I would do next is unlock the leveling base with a small lever at the side, have a look at the spirit level, move the whole tripod head until the base on the leveling base is level. And once that's locked off and your tripod head is level, so you've got a spirit level on the tripod as well, is that you know 100% that if that camera now rotates around on its axis, once that is attached, that your camera is going to be level all the way around particularly if you're shooting panoramas, because the worst thing that you can have is that if it's slightly off, and this is where if you're trying to level your tripod only using the legs, is it might be level pointed at that direction. But as soon as you've turned the camera, if the tripod base is not level, you can't tell. So that's where just using say an in-camera level is not accurate because it's level at where it's currently facing, not where it's moving to. Whereas once the leveling base is level, then it's a guarantee that the whole tripod 360 degrees all the way around is level. So if shooting panoramas, you'll find a far more accurate shot. Okay, now a final question I get asked a lot is the difference between using the clip or flip locks versus using the twist locks, which you'll see here on both of these Benro tripods. I personally prefer the twist locks because there's no steel or metal in any of the components. Whereas you'll find a lot of the flip or the clip locks are supported by a single stainless steel bolt, which over time, if that does rust, causes you the issue that if that snaps or fails, the last thing you want is to have several thousand dollars worth of camera equipment on something that could potentially let go at any given time due to wear and tear. With the twist locks, their componentry, nothing is steel on the inside. So there are plastic bushes within the center columns themselves of the carbon fiber tubes, that if you get sand and grit in them, it's just a simple case of untwisting them, pulling the tubes apart. I generally use a brush or a dustpan brush in the shower to clean them all out. And then again, use a dry lubricant, never use grease, it just gets clogged up if you do. But a dry lubricant that you can purchase from most hardware stores will get these back to running action very, very smoothly and quickly with no parts that can potentially fail. Now I have found over time with the flip locks, with those parts that can seize or fail, is they can become to the point where they don't lock. So you could give downward pressure and you'll see the legs start to collapse inwards. Whereas you'll find the mechanisms on these, once you tighten them, you can feel them locking. There's confidence in the fact that they are locked. And having the ability to pull them apart, service them and bring it back to a factory new condition, without any rust, without any general wear and tear and parts that can't be replaced, is the very, very big reason as to why I will use the twist locks. Now, another reason the twist locks are good is I find it's quick to just assemble all the way up and down and making quick, quick adjustments when you are using them out in the field. In saying that, what you'll generally find is that if you just grab all of them in your palm and give them all a twist, 
You can extend them all the way out very quickly, collapse them all the way quickly as well, and just give them all a twist to lock up. So thanks so much for joining me and allowing me to take you through the difference between the two tripods that I commonly use out in the field. For those interested in purchasing a Benro tripod, particularly here in Australia, you can purchase direct through the Australian importer and distributor, Maxim. As a Benro ambassador, you also will receive a 10% discount when using our ambassador code PC10 on the website when you go to the checkout. It also works on any products that Maxim distribute here in Australia, so it's not limited to only Benro. That might be a Shimoda bag, Haida filters, Samyang lenses. There are a multitude of different products that Maxim import into Australia where that code will work. If there are discounts currently being run with Maxim, our 10% discount code will stack, saving you an additional 10% on top of any sales that are currently happening. So thanks so much again for your time and attention. I've been Jay Collier from the Photography Workshop Co. And if you might like to join me on Safari in Africa, Antarctica, Kakadu, and several other places in and around Australia, please go to our website, thephotographyworkshopco.com. Thanks so much, and I hope to chat again very, very soon. Cheers.